Hey, what's up guys? My name is Andy Park. Welcome to this channel. In this video, I'll show you how to work with shapes and icons in PowerPoint. And rather than showing what each menu option does what, I thought it'd be fun to actually create a slide using the different shape tools, formatting, and techniques. So today, we're going to transform this boring SWOT analysis slide into this one. And I think you'll agree that this is a lot more visually appealing and more likely to grab your audience's attention. So let's get into it. Alright, so I've got a blank slide open in PowerPoint. We don't need titles and subtitles for this slide, so let's remove them. Click on the Layout button in the Home tab and select Blank Layout. Let's add in our header by selecting the text box, then click and drag over where you want to add your text. We're building a SWOT analysis on this slide, so let's type that in. For those of you who don't know what that is, simply put, it's a compilation of your business's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You lay out all the factors in the appropriate quadrant and come up with strategies to address them. So for example, how to build on your strength, mitigate your weaknesses, etc. Let's make the header larger, change the font, and change the color. I generally like to tone down the contrast of the black a little bit, so we'll select a shade of gray for this. We'll do the same for the subheading, but not as large and not as dark. Let's center the text within the text box. Then use the Arrange tool to align the text box to the middle of the slide. Make sure Align to Slide is selected. Then select Align Center. Now let's drag the text box up a little bit. Using a mouse might pull the text box off the center line, so it's a good idea to use the up and down arrow on your keyboard instead. Now we get into the fun parts and start making some shapes. Go to the Insert tab and select Shapes. We're going to select the teardrop shape. Just click anywhere on the screen and it'll drop the shape that's exactly 1 inch by 1 inch. If you want to change the size, you can drag any of the handles. I recommend always using the corner handles as it gives you more control. And if you hold on to the shift key while dragging the handles, it'll maintain the shape's aspect ratio. If you drag on the middle handles or don't hold on to the shift key while using the corner handles, it will not maintain aspect ratio and it'll distort the shape. I want the shape to be exactly one and a half inches, so I'll just enter it in the size section. Now, we're going to reshape this teardrop into a petal. I'll make a copy of the shape by selecting the shape and dragging out while holding onto the control key. I find this to be quicker than using control C than control V. Keeping one of the shapes selected, let's rotate it 180 degrees so that the pointy ends of each shape are facing in the opposite direction. You can use the handle to rotate but entering the value is more precise and I find it quicker. Now we can align the two shapes so that they are on top of each other. Select both objects by either dragging a selection over the two objects or hold onto the shift key and select each. Go to the arrange tool and select align. This time, make sure align selected object is checked. Then choose align to center and align to middle. So for quick clarification, if you have Align to Slide selected, the shapes will find the position relative to the entire slide. If you have Align Selected Objects, the shapes will find the position relative to each other. So let me illustrate this. 
Here's what happens if I align this shape to the center of the slide. And if I align these shapes to the center of each other. Now aligning them one more time to the middle will put the shapes on top of each other. Next we're going to merge these two shapes. Select the two shapes, go to the Format tab, then select Merge Shapes. Choose Union. Now this has become a single shape that looks like a leaf petal. We need to make four of these petals, but I already know that I don't want any outline in the shape. So before we make copies, let's remove the shape outline. While the shape is selected, go to Shape Outline and select No Outline. To copy the petal, I'll select and drag while holding onto the control key. This time, I'll flip the shape horizontally in the Rotate tool. We'll select both shapes now, then control drag to make another copy of the set. This time, we'll flip vertically. Now let's center these items to the slide. The easiest way to do this is to first group them together so that the shapes don't overlap each other. Once they're centered, I can ungroup. Now that looks pretty nice. Let's apply some colors. Select a shape, go to Shape Fill in the Format tab, and select appropriate color. Repeat the process for the other petals as well. Now let's add text to the petals. Go to the insert text box, then drag over the entire image of the petal so the size overlaps. Type S for strength. If the text box resizes as you type, Go to Format Shape. Choose Text Options and select Text Box. Then select Do Not Auto Fit. Now you can resize the text box properly. Let's change the font, make the letter larger, and choose white. We can then center the letter and also align text vertically. Let's copy this text box over to the other petals. Now if you make a mistake and the text boxes are not fully aligned, you can use the alignment tool to correct that. Now let's change the letter in each petal. I think this is looking good so far. Now we're ready to add some icons. Go to the insert tab and select Icons. For Strength, I'm going to go to the Sports section and choose this figure, Lifting Barbells. When I think about weakness, I envision the weakest link. So let's search for a link icon. Notice that as you select the icons, the Insert button tells you how many you've selected so far. 
Let's continue on and select the appropriate icons for opportunities and threats. Hit insert and all icons get inserted in the center. They're all clustered together and we don't want to pull them apart one by one. So let's just use the arrange tool to separate them evenly across the page. The icons could use a little formatting to make them look more refined. Let's add a halo behind them. Select the oval tool from the shape selection tool. And if you click once on the slide, it'll insert a perfect circle. Alternatively, you can click and drag while holding the shift key. Let's make three copies by using control drag and remove the outline from the shape. I think the circles are about the right size at one inch, but the icons are a little too big. We want to fit them in the circle, so let's reduce the size of the icons. After selecting all of the icons, holding onto the shift key, go to the size tab and make sure the lock aspect ratio is checked. Then change either the height or the width. Now we can layer in the icons over each of the circles by using the arrange tool. Select one of the icons, then one of the circles. Then go to the format tab, select a line and make sure Align Selected Objects is checked. Then you can align to center, then align to middle. When you do this, the icon seems to have disappeared, but it's actually hidden behind the circle. Let's select the circle, hit right mouse click, then send to back. We can repeat this step for the other sets. Let's format the icons. I want the icons to be white and the circles to match the corresponding petals. We can select all four icons together, then select shape fill to white. For the petals, we can choose a shape fill eyedropper tool, then sample and copy the appropriate color. Once done, we can group each set to make it easier to move them around together. Select both the icon and the circle in the set, then go to Arrange, then Group. Now let's position these grouped icons in their respective quadrants. Let's use the guidelines to position the top two icons, and for the bottom ones, we can adjust the vertical positions, then use the Align tool to align with the top two icons. Alright, we're almost there folks. We just need to add the text boxes now. Let's draw a text box around the first quadrant. We want to align the top and bottom to the pedal. If the box doesn't want to keep the shape, go to Format Shape, Text Options, Text Box, and select Do Not Auto Fit. To save time, I'll copy some text over. Then we can copy the text box over to the other quadrants.
And for the bottom two text boxes, we can align the text to the bottom for symmetry. And there you have it guys. Hope through this practical example, you learn how to work with shapes and maybe even give you some ideas for your next presentation design. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, check out some of my other videos on productivity. Thanks and bye now.